Today we're going to be performing heart auscultations. We're going to begin by describing the locations of the listening zones. So the first one is the aortic listening zone, which is between to the right of the sternum between this in the second intercostal space. The second one is a pulmonary listening zone, which is located to the left of the sternum and in the second intercostal space. The third one is the tricuspid listening zone, which is located to the left of the sternum and in the fourth or the fifth intercostal space. And the fifth or fourth one is the mitral listening zone, which is located to the left of the sternum, um, mid-clavicle, and in the fifth intercostal space. When performing auscultations, we're going to be using a stethoscope. Um, for most of your listening, you're going to be using the um, diaphragm side, which is this larger side. If, however, you detect an abnormality with the diaphragm, it's a good idea to flip over and listen with the bell side because that is better at picking up um, more higher pitched abnormal sounds. So when we're going to be um, assessing her uh, heart, we're going to be um, doing it from three different locations. So the first will be um, lying supine, the second will be lying on her left side, um, and the third will be seated. Um, when you're listening, you're gonna wanna be listening for several cardiac cycles in each listening zone, and you wanna listen for a distinct lub-dub sound. Um, you want the cardiac cycles to be regular and consistent. So basically, you're listening for anything that doesn't sound like those which would indicate that they might have a possible cardiac pathology. So we're going to start by having her lie supine on the table. And I'm just going to put um, the stethoscope pieces in my ear and then I'm going to be placing it on each zone and just listening for several cycles. I'm going to instruct the patient to breathe normally. Good. Next, I'm going to be instructing the patient to lie on her left side. She'll lay on the left with her arm up, supporting her um, in that position, and then I'll go through and listen to um, the listening zones in this position as well. Now I'm going to have the patient sit up, and for the seated position, what you want to have them do is lean slightly forward, and then I'm going to have her exhale all her air out and then hold her breath. You're going to listen to one location, and then stop, let her breathe again, exhale it all out, and then move to the next location. Good. Breathe normally. And exhale. Good. Breathe normally. And exhale. Good. Now I'm going to go through and test the locations again with her again leading, leaning forward and holding her breath, but I'm gonna, ha I'm gonna add the Valsalva, Valsalva maneuver and have her bear down um, while doing those other two. And what that does is it, um, it tests for a possible valve prolapse. So if you hear a clicking with that, that could be indicative of a valve prolapse and you'd want to send her in for um, additional medical testing. So we're gonna try that. Lean forward. Exhale and bear down. Good. 
and I would continue on and do that with all the other three locations. That is how you essentially perform cardiac auscultations. These auscultations can be performed on a sideline just by simply taking an athlete to a private location or just by modestly making sure they're modestly covered. Um, this is something that can be super easily done on the sideline. Um, Alright, and that's essentially how you perform cardiac auscultations.